Now we're going to be finding the rate in a percent problem. This is lesson 12b. I've got links to 12a in the previous videos you might need. In case you become lost or confused, just click the description. We've used this triangle to show the relationship between the elements of a percent problem. In video 11f, we solved using proportions, and in 12a, we found the part, the top part of the triangle. And the triangle shows us which operations to use to solve a percent problem. We cover the portion of the triangle that is missing in our problem. So if we're trying to find the rate, then that's what we cover. We cover the rate. And that tells us we need to do the part divided by the base. See? If we're trying to find the rate, we cover it on the triangle and see part divided by base. And that's going to equal the rate. Part divided by base equals rate. What percent of 300 is 57? So what percent? That's the rate. We need to find what percent of 300 is 57. We cover the rate, and we see that we need to do the part divided by the base. So 57 is the part. 300 is the base. So we need to do 57 divided by 300, and that's going to give us our percentage. We can also look at it as a fraction, because fractions are little division problems, aren't they? 57 divided by 300. We do 57 divided by 300 on our calculator, and it gives us 0.19, 19 hundredths. We move the decimal point back two hops, or take it off, and we add the percentage sign to convert it to a percent. We have 19 percent. Okay? Let's try it again. What percent is $3.50 of $14? We do part divided by base to get the percentage, the rate. We do $3.50 divided by $14. And we can do this without the dollar signs. We can just do 3.5, because that zero is not really necessary, is it? You could do it with a zero. It's no big deal. We do 3.5 divided by 14. 3.5 divided by 14 gives us a 0.25. We have to convert it to a percent. We get rid of the decimal point and put on a percentage sign, and we have 25%. So $3.50 is 25% of $14. And we can do this on the calculator, too. You can put 3, the decimal point, the 5, the division sign, then 1, then 4, then hit the percentage key, and then equals, and you're going to get 0.25. You have to convert it. To the percentage still, you have to take the decimal point off and put a percentage sign for your when you're writing the answer, okay? All right, let's try another one. $15 is what percent of $45? We're going to do the part divided by the base to get the percentage. So 15 is the part, 45 is $45 is the base. We're going to do $15 divided by $45. We don't need the dollar sign, and there's no sense, so we don't even need the decimal or the zeros. We can just do 15 divided by 45. And the calculator is going to have a decimal point and all these threes. We need to convert it to a percentage. So we move the decimal point back two hops, one, two, and now we have 33.33333. And we can put a bar on top of one of the threes behind the decimal point here to show that it's repeating. And we have 33.3 with the bar on top percent. If we write it as a fraction, we put 33 and a third percent, but we don't write the decimal point in between this three and that fraction one third, okay? We would only write it if we were writing it in decimal form with the three with the bar on top. If you're writing it as a fraction, there's no decimal point there, okay? We learned about that before. Now we have 325 is what percent of 1,625? We do the part divided by the base to get the percentage. So we do 325 divided by 1,625, and the calculator is going to show a 0.2, a 2 tenths. We need to convert it to a percent by moving the decimal point back two places, 1, 2, now we have an empty place value. We put a zero there as a placeholder, and we get a 20. We add the percentage sign. You can also do it on the calculator by doing this equation, 3, 
then 2, then 5, then the division sign, then 1, then 6, 2, 5, hit the percent key, hit the equals, and it'll give you that 0 0.2. But you're still going to need to convert it to a percent, all right? You should try it. You should try it with a few of them and see how it works. See if you figured it out with the calculator. We have 5 one hundredths, 0 0.05 is what percent of 8? We do the part divided by the base. This is the part. That's the base. We're looking for the percent. 0 0.05 divided by 8 equals, and the calculator is going to give us 0 0.0625. We need to convert it to a percent by moving the decimal place over. We're going to get a 6.25 percent. So this is going to be a, a percentage that has a decimal point in, in it, isn't it? It could also be 6 and 1 fourth percent without a decimal point, because 25 percent is 1 fourth, right? So we could even write it as 6 and 1 fourth percent if we wanted to. But for the sake of the test, we want it to be in decimal form if we have to write it into one of those standard grids, right? Because it doesn't take mixed values and there's no percentage sign. So this is probably going to be a multiple choice, but just make sure that you realize that there's a decimal point in this percentage, okay? What percent is 28 of 14? So it's asking to find the percentage. We need to find the rate, and it says of 14. That means we have to do the part divided by the base to get the percentage, but look, 28 is bigger than 14. That we're going to do 28 divided by 14 and get a 2. We have to convert it to a percentage, so we move the decimal point, that invisible decimal point behind this whole 2. We move it back two hops and add the percentage sign. That's going to give us 200%. And we know 2 whole is 200%, isn't it? Because 1 whole is 100%. That would be 100% plus, plus 100%, right? So the larger number is not always the base. Be careful. All right, you might end up with a percentage that's equivalent to a whole number or a mixed number, okay? So don't think that just because it's the bigger number that it's the base. That's not always true. You have to look at the wording. So now I'm going to help you with that, all right? So here's the wording. If it says part of the base, it means part divided by base. So 57 of 300 means 57 divided by 300, see? Think of the word of. When you're finding the rate, think of the word of as division, okay? When you look at our little triangle here, and we're trying to find the rate, we cover rate, right? So that means there's division here. So you're going to see part of base. And think of that division sign as an of, okay? When you're doing this one, think of the multiplication sign as of, all right? And I'll show you that in a second. So all of these say part of a base, part of a base. See, the green is part, the purple is base. So they all say of the base, that means divided by the base. All right, so to find the rate, we divide. To find the rate, we divide, because there's a little division sign here, okay? But we did this in our previous video. We found the percent of a base. Percent of base means percent times base. So, 10% of 50 means 0 0.10 times 50. 25% of 60 means 0.25 times 60. Remember, we turned it into a decimal and then just multiplied it. So if you're looking for a part, we're going to multiply. And the of then means multiply. When we're looking for the rate, the of is going to mean divide. And this little triangle can help you. When we're trying to find the part, we're trying to find this part, we cover it, right? That means we're going to do base times rate or rate times base, see? So that of is going to mean multiply. When we're looking for the rate, the of turns into meaning divide. See that? That would be the of, that would be the of, that would be the of in written form, okay? So maybe that will help you, and if you can remember this in your head or make a little note of this triangle in your notes, so that as you're studying, you can think of it and try to remember this when you're taking the test. If you can remember this triangle has a division sign here and a division sign here and a multiplication sign here, and it goes part, base, rate, that's going to help you on the test, okay? It might help you go quicker, all right? So 
to find the rate we divide to find the part we multiply. Okay? And if you need help, you can go back and watch that video 12a. There's going to be a link in this description. All right? So now you should be ready to do that skill focus on page 141, but only section A and B. We're not going to do the other sections yet of the skill focus because that's the next video, okay? The next video is going to be finding a percent of increase or decrease, 12C, and then you'll be able to do the rest of the skill focus on page 141 after we do this. I'm going to have links to all these helpful videos in the description, all right? So I'm hoping that this video alone should be enough to help you do that skill focus and to help you understand. But you know you can fall back and rely on those video links in the description in case you need it, okay? The more you completely understand it, the easier it's going to be for you to move forward, all right? So I'll see you next video. Have a great day. I'm proud of you. We're moving forward. Bye.